So, the topic is what we, you and I are experiencing and experience and continue to experience about that episode. Could you tell me what is that episode? COVID, yeah. So, it has become a, a general vocabulary of all households now. Whether you know sign, not signs, whether instead of whatever may be your background, it is immaterial now. So, new, new words have been introduced into every family, it's like masks. Uh, over 100 to 120 new words are in circulation today, which were never used earlier. It, is a, it has become a common language now. So, that is the impact that particular pandemic has done. So, I have chosen that topic in, without knowing your requirement, without knowing your expectations. So, the topic is such that everybody has experienced this, right? And you can share your experience to whatever I say now, right? So, you know, the already uh, Sir has said this is a part of the celebration for just this particular week because next week, 28th of February will be the day and National Science Day will be celebrated. Of course, every day is a celebration for science whenever new things happen. But on that particular day, we mark it because Sir C. V. Raman announced his findings subsequently which won the Nobel Prize. And I do not know how many of you know, he first announced his findings in the Central College. You know, there is a campus in the Bangalore University, there is a Central College campus, there is a physics department. He was attending a seminar there and in that seminar, he announced his findings. But in the next couple of months or one year, he gets the Nobel Prize for that. Even today in Bangalore University, that hall is named as Sir C. V. Raman Hall. It is there. Oh, fine. So, to celebrate that, people are doing all these different things. So, the one of the intentions of those celebrations is to sensitize youngsters. To sensitize youngsters about science. Because many times, science takes a back seat. Always, whether I, as a parent, I want my children go to different professional degrees. Basic sciences are totally ignored because every family has experienced it. Either it is so many other professional courses are offering now. There are people are, have pushed, and in the bargain, what has happened is the basic sciences, foundations of science, has shaken. So over the years, people are trying to motivate children, the parents, the society to do basic science and people usually say any country which has ignored basic science, it has not progressed in science. Anyway, that is the experience. So, the, you know these things and the title, this is the theme of the, the academy here, the annals of science and technology history. I don't know whether what, what type of history we will speak, anyway, we will go to that. So, every year, Government of India announces a specific theme for the National Science Day. Sometimes the, the theme used to be related to the physics, sometimes it is related to the mathematics, sometimes it is related to sustainable development, etc. This year, the theme is integrated approach in science and technology for sustainable future. See, they have used many things here. Integrated approach in science and technology for sustainable future. Could somebody tell me what exactly the hidden agenda of this integrated approach? What, what, why, what do we mean by that? Can you imagine? Integrated approach of what? Science and technology. Today, science and technology are two different domains. Now, they want to bring in the impact of science on technology. And the outcome of technology, again, it has influenced science now. These two things are going parallel. One is influencing the other. See, tech, all of us are the products of technology now, at least you, your generation. The technology has improved science, education, and because of outcome of education, research, etc., in turn, it has brought in new things to the technology. So, these two fields are interacting over a period of time, and today what the society is enjoying is not because of technology alone, it is not because of science alone, it is the interplay of these two different things. So, they want to integrate it for a sustainable future. That means, whatever we have, it has to be sustained. 
uh, of course, usually particularly those who teach, deal with environmental science, biodiversity, etc. They say we have to sustain all these different things for the future. So we have to make use of science, make use of technology, bring them together, develop models so that the future is safe for the next generation. That is the theme now. Right. As I have said, it's an interact it could be an interactive session. Anybody can interrupt and contribute to the discussion. I need not go through all these slides what I have prepared because this preparation was for a different purpose. I did not know the requirements of you people. Therefore, I, we can stop at any point of time. We can motivate discussion, question answers. We can share our ideas. <coughs> See, we have gone through four industrial revolutions. Usually, uh, I will not go into the details, industrial revolution one, two, three, four. Parallelly, again, we have these things. So today, people say, those who study education, we are in the fourth stage of evolution of education. Because the tech, so here, as you could see here, memorization, internet-enabled learning, consuming, producing knowledge, empowering education to produce innovation. And today, we are passing through a phase called transformative age. And these things are happening parallel to this now. So because of these things, new things have happened in the industry, and it has also changed. So what I first slide simply summarizes, there is a parallelism between these two. Education is changing. It is changing in the technology. Technology brings in new innovations and it has an impact on education and that is also changing. So they want to bring in together. So as I have told you, I have, to, I have chosen a title now. This is the title. The last two years, what all we have experienced is this competition between Two players. What are those players? One is man, another is goat. Both are trying to struggle. They are struggling, they are interacting. One is trying to overpower the other now. So like that, things are happening that during the last two years. So from that perspective, I have chosen this title, Man, man and COVID, how this competition is going and what is the impact of this competition on all of us now? And who is studying this competition? It is not the TV channels, it is not the newspapers. So what all are impressed by these different media sources, right? Newspaper articles, etc. But in nature, in nature, see here, it's a real time essay. Every day you're getting information. What is the frequency of infection? What is the infection positivity rate? How many hospitalizations? So every day you are getting the data now. In the real time, it is not the past. Whatever we taught in the class, etc., it was the history. But today, particularly the interaction between these two competitors, in day in and day out, information is coming and people are looking at it. That's why I have said it is a real time study now. Very rarely it happens. Of course, in history, there are many such things. But we have to imagine what happened those days. Somebody has written some articles. We make use of those articles and read it. But today, what is happening is, in front of you, in, depending on your perception, depending on your experience, you can ask, analyze the same data, same data from different angles. How it has impacted the society, how it has impacted the economy of the country, how it has impacted the education. So many things have happened because of this competition. So the aim of this, my presentation is this. Collaboration and interdisciplinary research. So all these things that, are, that have happened, it is because of the understanding of this competition between two players. It is because of collaborations. Not one person, one lab, one country, or one system, or one, uh, one organization has done it. It is a collaboration among different diversified disciplines now. Economists are involved, educationists are involved, political scientists are involved, so technologists are involved. So it is a collaboration and also this interdisciplinary, that means different disciplines are contributing to understand the dynamics of the competition. And the 
because of this competition, what has happened to this society? So it is totally a collaborative end endeavor and different disciplines have come together. So what is collaboration? You know, I did not go through that. Collaboration is nothing but interactions between two experts, between two domains, two, two different people who are doing different things, but the intention is to target one thing. The, here the target is the interaction between two players now. So the goal is there, Inter one, one depends on the other, like this. Co collaboration you can defend depending upon what you are doing. So here the goal is to understand the competition between these two and its impact. So as I said already, the technology and education are by direction. So we are passing through a transformative age now. I said, because of the technology, many things have happened around us. You must have experienced it now, right? I will tell you a few things. The future work will be radically different, driven by the machine economy. Already you must have seen artificial intelligence. So many post offices are closed, many banks are closed, many jobs have been removed because machines are taking away our jobs now. Routine training in the classroom, what we are doing may not be tenable in future. Right? That's why we need artificial intelligence. That means how the technology is changing the robotics. Now it is in period of robotics and machine learning or same programs if it is being repeated. Right? Why a man should say it is programmed, a robot should do that. So gradually, the earlier jobs, employment is eaten away by this technology now, right? Artificial intelligence augment the human. So instead of human being, artificial intelligence would do that. So at wo as workplaces change, so does it takes the graduate to be work ready. Now, usually we say unemployable, but today, the concept of unemployability is totally different now, right? So we have to be work ready means all ch our children, our students, we, we have to face this particular challenge because our jobs are being already taken over by robots and machine machines and therefore we have to be careful. So that's how the entire system is getting transformed. So why collaboration? Now you have come from different colleges, different universities or colleges. So what has happened is the human resource in terms of experience and expertise and in infrastructure, teaching, learning and research is unequal. That means you have about 400 to 500 college, colleges in the Bangalore city. But if you see the faculty, the human resource, the expertise, the infrastructure, the lab is not uniform. All of us get the same degree, BSc in biotechnology, MSc in biotechnology, bioinformatics, the degree is same, but the way in which the students are trained, students are taught, is not the same. That's why, because of different challenges, different constraints, this is unequal among different institutions, not only in between colleges, but also between universities, whatever Tumkur University and Mysore, Mysore versus Banaras Hindu University or Delhi University, totally different now. And in, in Bangalore itself, I, the, the ambience, the workplace, the teaching, learning in the of science could be totally different from others. But all of us are ending up having PhD in science, PhD in physics, physics in chemistry. But the bottom line is, everything is unequal. That means the products that are coming out of institutions are of different calibers. Our country is characterized by one more important thing, rural-urban divide. So within Bangalore itself, there is so much of diversity. And if you take institutions in remote areas, urban areas, rural areas, much more difference. So every university produces thousands of graduates, but non-uniform in their training program. Therefore, one university or a one college, one department cannot satisfy the needs of all. So therefore, what we propose now is there must be collaboration between two different colleges where one, one college may be having an extraordinarily infrastructure for biology, another could be physics, another college could be for, for mathematics. So like that, collaborations have to take place between colleges, 
between faculties, between universities, then only students will be the beneficiaries. Because every university, every cadet college cannot boast of full-fledged trained human resource. That, that is impossible. But today the demand is the teachers have to be trained to teach interdisciplinary programs. The children, the students need to be trained in, in a different way. Therefore, these partitions, now just now I learned that you know, coming, coming from Adarsha College or Bangalore University proper, etc. But uh, if these, all these expertise can, can come together, students can move from one university, one college to the other college to take a course, to, to earn a credit, it's good. Because when once you're out of, uh, admitted to a one particular college, any college, you are trapped for four years or three years, you cannot go anywhere to earn a degree, earn a credit, earn a course. By chance, you are ended, ended up in a college. It may, have, it may be good in physics, but it may not be so good in mathematics or chemistry. So if some other college, some other university is offering better course in chemistry, you must be able to get admission there, earn a credit. So credits earned in two different places can come together to get a degree. That is the mobility of the student. And this is collaboration. And this has to happen in the interest of children, then only students will be benefited. Now, I was admitted to one college in Mysore, whether, whether they like it or not, whether expertise is available there or not, I have to get the degree for three years. And particularly engineering, four years, they're trapped. But now, this collaboration concept has come because of this. So, the students, the faculty, the research must have collaboration because the reason is the human resource, the experienced people, the expertise, infrastructure is not the same. So the vict who are the victims? Children. The children, the students are improperly, incorrectly trained even though they get a degree. So the, now the proposal in the last one year is mobility of the students from one institution to the other to get credits in different courses. So if you put all these credits together, university will give you a degree. That is called collaboration. So this is, in the transformative age, collaboration is a must. Because all the institutions are already appointed people for 20 years. When I was appointed in my city for 30 years, I did not change. So to bring in a new person, one has to retain. So transformative age, artificial intelligence, robotics, machine learning, so many things have to happen. For example, in biology, people don't want to do di promote dissections. Uh, robots will do the dissection, and it will be displayed on the TV screen now. That means even a traditional biology course has to be changed. So in the transformative age, the teaching and learning is different, training is different, therefore it demands collaboration. So message in all these things is we need to practice interdisciplinary teaching, learning, and collaboration among different institutions. I, I can tell you because students are here, today it should be the demand of children. Yeah. That's why it all depends upon, he's, he, now he's, he wants to be predictive now. So 1.4 is moving. Parallelly, education is also moved. The next phase, next phase in industrial revolution depends upon what type of outcome would come from the transformative age from, from the academics. Sir, will the metaverse uh, affect it? Will the metaverse affect it? Metaverse. What is The new concept is coming like metaverse. What is it? No, that's what is happening. So if the technology promotes such things, right, it's a digital world, of the world, etc. Naturally, it will impact on the education now. So then what will be the impact on uh, industry? You said it is going parallel. Going parallel, new type of industries have to come now. They are not promoting new type of industries. That is the policy. It's policy policy makers have to make use of these things that are happening outside their 
meeting rooms, right? As he said, digital technology, digital economy, so many things have happened in the last two years. Suddenly, do you see people are getting degrees without attending the exams. We never thought of those things. Today, yesterday, we had a discussion. People are getting science degrees without getting into the labs. So that means everything a screen and the robotics will tell you this is how virtual labs now. Physics virtual lab, biology virtual lab, but nothing has happened in with your skills now. So naturally there is a demand in the future how these skills have to be changed. What are the expectations in this training program and what would be the outcome on the institutions, on the industries and the, for example, every college has institution has invested huge amount of money in labs and hostels. But in the last two years, hostels have to be closed because everything was online now. And people say that management says we have raised huge loans to construct that uh, hostels, but they without students, they cannot repay the money. So all such things parallelly are happening. As you asked, the next phase would depend upon what is the outcome of these things. So you know Charles Darwin is an evolutionary biologist. Long back he has said, in the long history of humankind, those who learn to collaborate and improvise are the ones that have prevailed. So today the survival of an individual or the society depends upon how different societies, different learning patterns are going to collaborate. If you, if you don't collaborate, you cannot adapt to a change. Because no lab, no institution, no policy maker is self-sufficient to make a decision. It must be collaboration among different expert people, expertise, and then only decisions could be made. If you don't do it, if you restrict yourselves to one particular define or a particular domain, you may not. Today, biology alone cannot survive. Biology has to interact with molecular biology, chemistry, biochemistry, mathematics, bioinformatics. So zoology alone has no meaning today. Zoology people have to get, get to these different defines, collaborate, and a new discipline has to come up now. So everything has to change now. So whatever we discuss, whatever we do, it should be futuristic, as he asked no doubt sir, that human survival will continue to depend more and more on the intellect and technology. Intellectual ability must be there and technology must be there. Of course, uh, there are many problems. Co today, cocktails, um, all these are there and people are commenting, writing articles, etc., etc. whether the third dose is there, what should be the gap between the first dose and the second dose, and second dose to the boost. All these things are good because we, do, we, we don't have sufficient time to do research and models, vaccine independent, like that. Many discussions are going on and you, that's why if you read more and more, you can develop your own theory and models. Of course, this is one, see here, this is the first wave, second wave and third wave. This is the latest, right, 18, 20. February 18th, and globally people have marked what is the impact of all these different things weekly and like this, and this is the third wave what we are seeing now. In spite of so many infections, hospitalization is less, death is less, because during this particular period, vaccination has taken place. That means vaccination has not stopped mutations. Wherever mutations have happened with new characters, the third wave has this is the, the Indian picture. Similarly, globally, you could see that. That means internationally, this is being collaborated and correlated. So what we have to achieve now is community immunity now. That means that it is a time-consuming thing. 
It can happen with only social scientists uh, encouraging people to take as much vaccine as possible. Till, the, till that period, we have to use masks, etc., etc., for our survival. And now, competition is taking place between two species, man and virus. And even among mutant strains, there is a competition uh, within the virus, like this. All types of competitions are there in the society, in the system now, between viruses, between variants, between man and virus, vaccine versus non responses and responses. So like all these things are happening simultaneously and my message is this. And finally, you see this last cup and the virus is one candidate and it is doing all the havoc and one candidate is making the policy for how to damage society and how it can survive. But as far as the decision makers, many, many, many decision makers are involved. Many, many committees are involved at the national level, at the international level, even in Karnataka, task force, inter like that. People say that we need to have more interaction, more discussion among these multiple decision makers, whereas the COVID is only one monopoly. One man decides everything and he does all these things. And now one message that all of us learned is multiple policy makers need to have a lot of interaction. See now, last year, they have a societal experiment. They have analyzed how viruses affect social behavior and and how quarantine ironically could make susceptible to other maladies due to lack of microbial exposure. When you are in the quarantine at home, you are not exposed to other microbes. Therefore, you are susceptible to some other type of infections. Similarly, at the psychological level, we describe the ways in which the pandemic can affect mating behavior, cooperation, gender norms, so many. At the cultural level, we describe shifting of cultural norms, how we might harness them for better, etc. Economy is affected, education is affected, and worldwide social experiment is still going on. And the effect of these things could be seen only after one decade because children are, I don't know what is the makeup of their mind and how they will change, etc., etc. Will humans catch up? Maybe yes or no. Humans do not reproduce fast enough and accumulate enough favorable mutations. So what has happened now is unprecedented in the history of human pandemics. We now have a massive global data, supercomputers to analyze them and understanding evolutionary processes to predict what would happen next, etc. And now the final message is we have about 30 vaccines ready today, but they're not as effective. Therefore, the attempt today is this accelerating evolution of this virus demands a universal consensus vaccine. So then we need to have one consensus vaccine so that it can affect all types of... So the research is going on to artificially generate mutant varieties, variants, etc., to produce one generic vaccine so the generic vaccine should be able to neutralize the harmful effects of any variant that can come up in the future. So that is the trend that is going on now. What will be the outcome of this competition? Who will win? It looks like a nip and tuck between the virus and the man. And COVID-19 could become a seasonal problem like influenza or mild but endemic. Today it is mild and it is endemic. Variant is mild, so therefore people are relaxed. So in future, what has happened is we have to coexist with the virus because it is very difficult to eradicate. So last two years, the message is this. People have tried and both the players have changing their attitudes and all these message learns, the lessons learned, it is because of the collaborations interdisciplinary research and that's why we have sustained and we are sitting here.
Thank you. want to make comment on this, most welcome, or if you add some more information, you are welcome. Because it's not final. I have summed up many things only to sensitize you. Today, we have a challenge, we have data before you. Beyond your classroom, beyond your curriculum, you can think and generate ideas and models. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, if any questions, I request uh, participants to ask. You may raise your hand, I can give you mic. Any questions? Yeah. Yeah. I request all of you to give your feedback in the website also, so that we can improvise our, uh, uh, your basic list and uh, our programs and the seminar talks. What is the future? Future is unpredictable now. The equations are unpredictable now. Only when things, because of before, next two years back, we never thought that we'll pass through the, this tough experience. Because this experience, we have designed different things now. So at least there must be some models, theoretical models, mathematical models, to predict what would be the expected outcome. For example, biologists or chemistry people know this century is said to be the age of biology now. Every century is labeled century of mathematics, century of physics, etc., because the society expects many things to happen during this century from biologists. Yeah. So here, why this has happened is this because of this. Earlier, we did not know what was the gene, what was that, etc. And only in 1950, deoxyribonucleic acid was so discovered to be the hereditary material, then the structure, function. So during the last 70 years, many things have happened. Many things have happened with this macromolecule deoxyribonucleic acid. And that has changed the face now. That has that, that changed, and now there are so many omics now, genomics, proteomics, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera has come. So people now expect many good things, innovative things, novel things can happen in biology. Because earlier to 1950, it was not possible. Technology was not available, right? Physics was improving fast. Chemistry was on an ascending scale, but biology was not. When once the technology is available, this particular field has dominated and people expect during this century many things would happen. For example, this particular thing is an interdisciplinary science. You could see now traditional biology, microbiology, physics, crystallography, chemistry, mathematics, modeling, biochemistry, biotechnology, structural biology, genetic engineering, computations. So all these different things, earlier people thought it will be a domain of biologists. It is no longer. During the last seven decades, that particular genome biology is because of the contributions from all these people now. And today, finally, even the policy makers, policy makers are involved in because they have to make use of this, whether because we have many ethical issues, these ethical issues have to be decided by the policy makers, even they are in the field now. So the genome biology is no longer the domain of botany or zoology, but all these different physics, chemistry, crystallography, mathematics, all these people are interacting now. So even though, even though in many universities and colleges we offer a degree in biotechnology, very rarely ex we have expertise in all these different things to teach students. We don't have practicals to do these things. Only many things are taught on the blackboards. Anyway, what are my message is, this is how science has grown. I have taken one example. And now, a few minutes, I will spend on this, man and COVID, and how interdisciplinary research study in the last two years, there's nothing history here, 
it started in January of last year and it continues to do now. Who are the players? One is human being, another is the virus, technically called Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus or virus X, COVID-19. So these are the two players. One is trying to outbeat the other now. So if you look at the people who have studied in the last two decades about this competition, uh, see here, to start with, it is microbiologists and the virologists, molecular biology, bioorganic chemistry, physics, statistics, pharmacology, genome biology, health sciences, immunology, genetics, evolution, vaccine research, new variants, epidemiology, infrastructure, all these things. So all these, earlier then, very rarely people used to interact, epidem epidemiologists used to interact with genome biologists. So every, every discipline, what I have to study here, they were in isolation. But now to understand the dynamics and the implications of this, two things that are happening simultaneously, two, one is virus, another is a invisible virus, and human being. All these different people, all of them did not come together simultaneously. Of the first wave, second wave, during these things, when new challenges were coming up, gradually, first it was the domain of uh, virologists, etc. Gradually, all these people have to put in their heads to see how to take care of this epidemic now. It's totally in interdisciplinary, transdisciplinary investigations that have taken place to understand the competition between those two. See, some more lockdowns, sociology, psychology, education, economy, journalism, political science, behavioral science, modeling, prediction, management, and policy. So, see, every discipline, sociology department never interacted with mathematics. Mathematics people never interacted with some other people. Today, all these things are coming together. The goal is to appreciate, to take care of this pandemic so that the damage could be reduced. The first wave, the damage was high. Second wave also, damage was whole. But during the third wave, the damage is very much is there, but it is not to the extent of first wave and the second. Because we have learned now. This learning process is not due to one person or one group or etc. All these people, what I have listed now, they have contributed to by learning what has happened in the first wave, what has happened in the second, and now, Today we are having this, otherwise it would have been an online. Right? All these things have changed over two, two, uh, two years and technology has played an immense role in this and also correspondingly policy decisions. See, there was no trained person to take a policy decision here. Many a times I have made a joke, the anchors in the TV are the policy makers now. That's how the public opinion is being taken care of. Anyway, I just to impress upon you, every subject, every, whether it is liberal arts, liberal science, humanities, etc., every science, every domain is important today. People have to, every one of you can make a career in any one of them if you are a good epidemiologist. So even in medical, there is an epi epidemiology course, but people never heard of it. Today, epidemiologists are required to build up models to expect what would happen after the third wave, what would happen on the fourth wave if, if it comes. So like that, it, it is a predictive biology now. It is a predictive science now. All these things are possible because of the interplay. So the message today is, as I am telling you, it is a collaborative age, it is an interactive age, interdisciplinary research. Any problem, every problem in the society has to be understood, analyzed, investigated by different angles. What has happened in all your colleges, wherever I have studied, where I have made an administration, compartments are so fixed. Department of Political Science, Department of Physics, Department of Chemistry, Department of never interacted. But today, this particular episode has brought them together. The, see, many decisions are made by politicians. These are the policy makers. Who are guiding them? So today is the day to demand sustainable development of the future,
depends upon such collaborations. <coughs> so globally, it is not limited to Karnataka, it is not limited to India, it is a global, I usually call it as a global experiment. Competition is going on throughout the world now. Earlier, many things were restricted to one part, but here in the last two years, you could see it's the international collaboration is taking place now. For example, WHO, many times you must have, on the TV, you must have heard Soumya, Swaminathan speaking. She is the chief of WHO now. Like that, many international agencies have come together because that they're hit by one common enemy. Common enemy is this COVID now. A worldwide social experiment. So the competition is happening between two players and it has a huge impact on the society. That's why people treat it as a worldwide social experiment. Of course, the in real time it is being tracked. So we are following a day in, day to day. You could see here the wealth of openly available data on a global scale. Every day it is updated. You can go to the Google or you can go to the websites of ICMR, Indian Medical Research, or the WHO. Every day they update the information. What has happened? What is the new variant? What is the new mutation? What are the new characters that are coming up? Whether that vaccine can be extended to this and all now. Or whether the vaccine, new vaccine has to be generated. What would be its? So many things are happening simultaneously. That's why you say on a global scale, Real data is available. This is real collaboration. If India alone were to do it, it would not have been possible. See, all the airports were closed last two years, not because of one country. Mobility has to be stopped. So here, this data that is available over the last two years has helped people to study, validate number of theories and laws in diverse fields now. It could be biology, it could be modeling, it could be epidemiology, or it could be political science or sociology, how the social structure has changed. So like the different, all these different disciplines were in isolation, compartmentalization, but now the data that is available to you, to all, anybody can draw the data from the public domain now, right? It's available. So now if you can develop a model, it could be useful to the country or the society. So when we study the competition, as I told you, one A versus B, so in this competition, as you could see here, strategies of the pathogen. Pathogen, it wants to survive, it is also an animal-like. It also has to survive. So as you have seen now, in the last two years, its strategies, its approach to overtake what a human being is doing is also different now. Right? So we could understand the strategies of the virus and in response to that, what we are doing, what are the strategies the human beings have followed, right? And how the interaction is taking place now. So one is influencing the other. So now you, you can list out the strategies of the pathogen. What are the things that you have learned, the, the how this virus is changing its strategies, approaches to counteract uh, human intervention. There is nothing, nothing new here. The viruses have survived. We have not eliminated, we have not eradicated. In spite of all our science and outcome, still the virus comes back. So what are the new things which were not present in the first wave? It has happened in the second wave. Whatever that was controlled during the second wave, it has reappeared in the so what are the new things that the virus is trying? It has tried. Sometimes it succeeded. Sometimes it has failed. Uh, okay. One thing that it is doing now is it is changing its properties. It is changing its properties. You, you must have read in newspapers, variants, etc., etc. Now all these variants are nothing but which are different in their properties. What are those properties? The, the frequency with which that can infect. When after infection, the rate at which it can duplicate, right? After duplication, to what extent 
that virus can harm the individual. So they, all of us have infections, but people are not hospitalized because the intensity of the effect is not as effective as first wave or the second wave. Like that, it has changed and it has survived. And like that, virus is also changing its characters. Similarly, whenever it is changing its properties, the other competitor is also changing. So first we started mask, distance, social distance. The, all these things happened in the first wave. All these things happened in the first wave only to control inf infection. And once you stop the infection, it cannot replicate. No new variants can be produced like that. And then we call the vaccines, antiviral drugs. So to counteract virus, the competitor is also changing. And because of these two interactions, both are changing now. Human beings are changing. The virus is also And all this outcome is just because of the inputs that have come from different disciplines what have listed. It is not, it is not virology alone, it is not only the doctors, it is not only the nurses, or not only the ventilators, etc. So different people have brought in together the information to look at what the virus is undergoing, how the human beings are responding to that, and what new innovative things have to happen in the first waves. So total the, the message wanted to say is, this is a, a very fertile period for students to look at this data, to look at this data and think beyond what is not present in the textbooks now, what is not present in journals, what is not taught in the classroom. So it's more innovative models are coming. I don't know whether you're reading those uh, supplementary articles, review articles. Untrained people are imagining, they're extending their imagination, etc. Last month, there are two articles. What is the effect of this lockdown on the psychology of children from five to 10 years? The age, five to 10 years, and the students age between 10 to 6, 20 years. All of them are at home. So psychologists have studied the impact of this on the behavior on children. And in turn, the behavior of the parents now. There's a huge social problem, societal problem. Many models have come up now. Yeah. All these things, see, all these things are happening simultaneously. One is, one is not after the other. So something happens here and you react to that immediately. Immediately somebody else will react. So holistically one has to study these things. This holistic approach is because of collaboration and interdisciplinary research. I can skip many things. See, one important thing that has happened, I don't know whether you have read these things. From where did this virus came? Huh? So, usually when we start dealing with such things, I have to look as a biologist or a scientist, I want to, who, from where exactly it originated. So, a lot of things happened in the early, during the first wave, to understand which is the source. It is not so easy to decide, uh, and as he said, it could be from the Wuhan lab, because already in that particular lab, it's an internationally reputed virology lab, microbiology lab, many strains were there. Many strains of this virus was there. Of course, this virus is in the bat. So from the bat, they isolated it, and they were doing their academic research. So one interpretation was, by mistake, by accident, by serendipity, this particular strain has escaped the lab and it has evolved. There's one theory. Other conspiracy theory is that intentionally they have fabricated this virus which has harmful effects on the respiratory system and they have released it to take over the economy of America, economy of Europe, etc. So one, two theories. It was there in the lab, accidentally it escaped, and the other theory is conspiracy theory. To decide these things, WHO sent a team of experts, auditors, to the lab. First, first visit was offered, and the first visit, the auditors uh, 
came out with the decision it must be an accident. And again, the world did not accept it. And again, the second team was about to be sent, but the China did not permit it. So like this, so what is the, see the implication? One, one virus, invisible virus, and for its survival, it depends on us. We are the facilitators. And it, it, it gets into our body, and it makes use of our body for its survival, and does all the things. And it originated, whether by mistakes. Even today, it is that, that conflict is alive. See, I will not get to the, this particular task has raised so many things, intercontinental problems now. Anyway, of course, you need not worry about these things. So finally, I will go around because he has already come to the message. This is the one. See, this virus is there across the globe, right? And the characters are changing. New variants are coming, not only in Bangalore, not only in Karnataka, or like people said in Kerala or Bombay. Across the globe, new variants are coming. And the, when the people mo move from one region to the other, they carry these variants. So internationally, internationally there is a group called interagency group, SIG group, to track the mutations, the changes that are happening across the globe now. Not only they are tracking it, but they are looking at the properties. And if this virus with this property goes to Indian subcontinent, an African continent, what would happen? So this is, that's why I said it was an international collaborated project. Anyway, this we can, I can skip. So one important thing all of us have to remember now is virus is a foreign body. It is like an antigen. So whenever, whenever an antigen gets into bo our body, our body responds to that by producing antibodies. If, if I am not in a position to produce antibody, I take vaccines or I take some other protective device. But this mischievous virus, what is it doing is, originally it has one antigenic property. So for that antigenic property, with that antigenic property, the virus created havoc in the first way. Subsequently, more mutations, more variations came up. With that, its antigenic property is different now. That's why I said the antigenic property is changing now. So whatever vaccines we have fabricated, whatever remedial measures we have thought of may not be effective to the new variant now. So one important thing that challenge all of us are facing is changes, rapid changes in the antigenic property. Our body can react to that, but suddenly a new, antigenic, new antigen gets in body will not be in a position to take care of it. Okay, I can skip this. <coughs> See, now globally people have identified these variants. And these now variants are not restricted to any one country, it's present everywhere. And if, if you want, you can read these things. Some, wa some variants are of interest, some are concerned as, are very concerned, some are have high consequences on the society. So these things are possible. Again, I repeat, it is because of the exchange of information among different countries. This is the one that is required today, epidemiological models. Epidemiology is the one, a branch of science which studies what is happening today, what is the infectivity rate, and what is happening, how many of them are suffering, how many of them have escaped, and all these things. If, if you have the reliable data of all these different 
parameters, then people say that we can predict the impact of the next wave. But what is happening is we do not have reliable data for all these different variables now. Because as you are read in newspapers, people get infection, but they will not be reported. Because now antigenic uh, kit is available for 250 rupees. I get that kit and test at my, my home. And if I am positive, I will not report. And without reporting, I am moving in the society. I am spreading now. So like this, many things are happening. Therefore, now epidemiologists are at a loss to build up a model based on this particular structure now. That means it is possible if you get the data. Uh, this is important. The success of science, the triumph of science. Uh, that means within six months, first wave we did not have vaccines. And the vaccine came up within six months, that's why I, I called it as success of science and triumph of science. During January 2020, coronavirus was a mysterious new threat. Normally, the time required to have a vaccine uh, in history is about 15 years. Now, during this challenge period by the pandemic, just 16 months later, there are 13 vaccines approved for full use now. Of course, there are many controversies, whether it is a side effect, etc. But all of us are safe today because of vaccines. And this is the real success story of science and India has contributed immensely to do this and Indian uh, pharmaceutical companies have exported vaccines to the other countries. And this is, of course, this vaccine was not there. This has come up because of this pandemic. And uh, virus has a threat and human beings have responded to that because of this particular science. Thank you. <laughs>